We bless you, Lord. We worship you. We give you all glory and adoration. Give you all exaltation. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. That your name will be glorified in that Christ. Thank you, Father, for life. Thank you for healing. Thank you for all that you are doing and continue to do in our lives. May was are not even enough to appreciate you for who you are, for what you are doing, Holy Spirit. All we can say is thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. God bless you. God bless you for connecting. God bless you for sharing. God bless you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord, for everything. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. And mightier than the mightiest and greater than the greatest. Be thou exalted and magnified. Be thou worshipped for who you are. Who you represent and who you will always be. Hallelujah. Have your way, O Lord. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are great. We exalt your name. We worship you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O oh Lord. Have your way, Father. We just want to thank you for being alive. A lot of people are waiting for God to do all, but we just thank you for life. We thank you, all of us, for we are still here because you have kept us for a reason. You want us to fulfill a mission for you. Lord, help us to complete the assignments. Help us to function in our ordination that we will not fail you, oh Lord. Help us. We are not worthy to be called thy sons and daughters, oh Lord. But out of your tender mercy, have mercy upon us. Make a name for yourself today, La Brogo Shakataba, that your name will be glorified. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. If you are connected, just begin to appreciate Him. Thank Him for He is God. We exalt you, Lord, we worship you. We magnify your holy name. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father, that your name will be glorified. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. And God will begin to do something in your life. You know, this is the time not just to wish for things to happen, but we are going to make things happen by the grace of God. In the name of Jesus Christ. O katasi kataba, maziko torobuli kana mashakataba. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be adored. Let your name be worshipped. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you for many are the affliction of the righteous. The Bible said, but the Lord Himself delivered him from them all. Thank you for delivering us and making a name for yourself, even in our life. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Bagorobo Sakataba. Rekata Shikotobo. Mazikataraba. Rabaga Shokotobo Sekene Mamama. In the name of Jesus Christ. We worship you, Lord. We exalt, we magnify you. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. Have your way, O Lord. Have your way, Father. Bagokorobo Sakataba. I just want you to begin to worship him, continue to praise him. He is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be adored. He's worthy to be exalted. He's worthy. He is a worthy God. May words are not even enough. We thank you, Lord, for that. For the Bible said, the entrance of your word bringeth light and understanding to the simple. Lord, your word is a lamp unto our feet and the light unto our path. Let the word that we are hearing and speaking now not be an enticing word of a man, but let it be the word of God that will bring glory to thy holy name in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you all adoration and honor. We worship you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Thank you, Jesus. The word for us today is the realms of God. We have talked about it in bits and, and pieces, but today we are going to dive in. And many times we have not been fulfilled in our quest and in our desire to do the will of God because we are not operating in the same realm with him. 
but it's a spirit. And the Bible says there that must serve him, must serve him in truth and in spirit. That means there is no shortcut in the way that we serve God. God is a spirit, and there that must serve him, must serve him in truth. And a lot of Christians have not been able to even understand the physical things. How come the supernatural, the spiritual things, is going to be almost impossible for us to get into the realm of God if we cannot metamorphose from the darkness, from light, from darkness into light, from, 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 from flesh into the spirit. I want us to go to the book of Matthew chapter 6. Hallelujah. If you read from verse 9, the Bible says, after this manner, he told them, Matthew 6 verse 9, eh? but we are going to read to 13. 13 is where we are staying. This is our lost prayer, actually. In fact, we have prayed this prayer, you have prayed, but we are going to dissect and go into it and begin to uh, understand the mystics and the power behind the prayer. He said, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. When you call God your Father, God becomes closer to you than being a God. When you say God, you have to go through some demands to be up to that place to see God. There are security checks that you must cross. But when you see your father, it's easier to access the third heaven, coming as a son. So he said, our father, which at heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Hallelujah. And forgive us our debts as we forgive those. Hallelujah. As we forgive our debtors. But you look at verse 13. That's where I want to focus on. He said, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. So even Jesus acknowledged they are evil on earth. So you cannot overcome evil without having the ability of God, without having the ability of the spirit, without understanding the power of the deity, God. He said, lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. That is the realms where God operates from. Men can only operate in three realms that I'm going to explain to you. God, God operates in these three realms. For thine is the kingdom. God is the king of his kingdom. And everything under his kingdom is under his control. That is where his position as a God. For thine is the kingdom. The power, God operates through his power, which is the Holy Spirit is the manifestation of the power of God. And the glory, the glory of God is an aura, is, is, the, is, the, is the experience of God. When you get into the presence of God, you don't physically see God. You experience his glory. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. God operates in these three realms forever and ever. And many times they say faith is the substance of things that we hope for and the evidence of things we cannot see. So you can only purchase into the heavenlies by faith. But if you don't have faith, how do you get things done? You get into the glory of God. If you get into a place that the glory of God have been, have been harvested, is cultivated, that God is present there through his glory, you can get hundreds of years of things that were not able to be done, done in that moment. Because the glory of God brings possibility, brings results. But how do I find his glory? The Bible says, in the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At the right hand of the Father, there are pleasures forevermore. You must find his presence. We have to go back before we go forward. Many of us have become Christians, but we don't know God. We have not been able to experience God in his deity form. God gives us things here and there. We pray and we throw all kinds of things around and we get results because we, we, we don't really know the pattern. This is a system that once we understand the system, things will be get, gotten done in this kingdom. But until then, we are going to be trying locks and throwing things on the wall. And whatever happens, we say, well, but there are systems that must be followed. Jesus said in John chapter 10, verse 10, the be part of it. He talked about the devil for this. He said the thief coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Jesus is not a thief. He said, but I have come that thou should have life and have it in abundance. So are we going to choose life today? That we should live. Hallelujah. He told the children of God, I have said before you life and death. Choose life that you might live. 
I have come that you should have life. Then we have said, we will say, I have become a Christian. Why haven't I understood the ways of God? Because we have not died to ourselves. I want us to pray today. I want you to pray. I want you to pray from your heart. Say, God, help me. Have mercy upon me. Let's call upon God. It's not this kind of prayer we just rush into and we get out. No, no, no. Don't look at the time. I want us to pray. If we can only pray two prayer topics or one tonight and get results, it's better to pray effectively than to pray amiss. The Bible says the effective prayer of the righteous are valent much in the presence of God. Instead of just doing prayers and we are praying and praying and we don't get results, let's pray an effective prayer. Ask God today to have mercy upon you. Let the blood of Jesus be available to cleanse you again from the crowns of your head to the sole of your foot by the authority and the power. I just want us to pray now. Lord, have mercy upon you. Have mercy. Have mercy upon me. Lord, it is time for you to show mercy upon your sons, your daughters. Lord, because we are chasing the wrong thing. Many of us think that doing God is clapping hands, going to church, reading the word of God. Yes, it is all of the above. But if we cannot see God in the spirit, we cannot be part of him. Lord, have mercy. Help us to know thy ways. Help us to understand who you are. Help us. Many of us are not taught. You have been preached to you receive Jesus Christ. But that is just one part of it. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. And a lot of Christians, even pastors, bishops, apostles, are born again. They can only see the kingdom. But Jesus went further in verse 5 of John chapter 3. He said, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter. God, why haven't I entered into the kingdom? What is holding me at the gate? What have I not done? Why haven't I been able to break forth to win a soul? Why is it that if I go to pray, I start to sleep? Those Christians, a lot of Christians can't pray for one hour. Like Peter and them, they went to, with Jesus to the mountain. They couldn't wait for one hour because their body is weak, but their flesh, their, their spirit is willing, but their flesh is weak. Ask God to help you today to be able to stand in his presence, to be able to wait for God all night, to do his will, to do the biddings of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Jesus said, I have come. Holy Spirit, help me to know Jesus. Help me to understand God. Help me to move into the realm of God. Help me to pray in the spirit. Lord, let your prayer come to me. Help me to pray. The Bible says, I know not what to pray or ask. But the Spirit, the Holy Ghost, make intercession. Spirit of God begin to make intercession for us. Make intercession in our heart. Make intercession in our stomach. Pray from our belly. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow the rivers of living water. Let the water of God begin to flow through me now. Let it flow in me by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, flow through us. Let the word that we speak not just be words, but let it be spirit and let it be life. Holy Spirit, we pray this hour. Help us to pray. Help us to pray. We want to know you, O Lord. We want to know you. Help us to know you, Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 103, verse 7. Look at the Bible saying, God, God was talking to, to David and he said, he made his ways, his ways, his ways known unto Moses. Hallelujah. His act unto the children of Israel. So Moses knew the God. But the children of Israel follow his act. A lot of Christians, including pastors, are running after the act of God. God is not his act. God can do something, but he's not what he did. I can cook, but I'm not the food that I cook. Hallelujah. That you can do something, is that does not mean that you are that thing. Many of us, we follow the act of God, the miracles of God. That's why the children of God, when, they, when every time God does something, they give him a name and say, this is who he is. God is 
neither any of those names. His acts, the children of Israel know him by the acts. But Moses knew the God. The Bible says he made his he made known his ways unto Moses. Psalm 103, verse 7. His act unto the children of Israel. Tell God today to make his way known unto you. I don't want to follow his act. I don't want to be chasing wind, chasing the activities of God. God just heals somebody in the root. I'm running down to the root. God can heal from heaven. He doesn't have to be in a place to heal. So we are, some of us are chasing the act of God. And God is not in those things. God, these are the acts of God. The Bible says he made his ways known unto Moses and his act unto the children of Israel. Lord, show me your way. Show me your way. I want you to pray that prayer today. Lord, show me your way. If that is all I get today, help me to find your way. For the Bible says the path of the just is like a shining light that shineth brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. Help me to find your way, oh Lord. Help me to find your way. Now, by the unction and the power, in the name of Jesus, help me to find your way, Holy Spirit. Help me to find your way. Help me to find your way. Help me to find your way. Help me. You make your way known to Moses, Lord. What am I not doing right? Correct it in my life. Every error of my serving you, every error of my following you, every error of my understanding you, every error of me reading your word, correct it. All of that. Make your ways known to me. I want you to pray that prayer with all your heart. Let it come from inner, from your, not from your lips. I want you to come from your stomach. This prayer has to go deep down. Lord, show me your ways. Help me to know your ways, to know your ways, to know your ways, not just to find your way, but to know your ways. The Bible says you make your ways known to Moses and your acts to the children of Israel. I don't want to stay by knowing your acts. I want to know your ways. Help me to know your ways today because that is where we can enter into your reign by the unction and the power. The Bible says for thine is the power, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory. Holy Spirit, may I find you in thy kingdom, find you in, in your power. May I find you in your glory. Every error of my life, every error of my family, every error of my generation, every error of where I am, correct it today. Show me thy ways. Make me know your ways by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus. I want you to pray that prayer. Let God be God in your life. We are tired of chasing his act. His act is not where he is. God is in his ways. When you understand the way of God, the Bible says the path of the job is like a shining light. The light of God is going to be in you when you understand his path. Find him by his path. Find him where he is, not by his act. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. We give you all glory and adoration. We give you all exaltation. We give you all honor. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Remember when Jesus was preaching and Jesus began to do miracles in John chapter 7. The miracle was so much and they wanted to make him, to crown him a king and he ran in the temple. If you look at verse 31, the Bible said, and many people believed in him. Many people believed in him and said, when Christ come, Christ was standing there, they didn't even know he was the one because they were still chasing away. And the Bible says in John chapter 7, verse 31, and many people believed in him and said, when Christ cometh, will he do more miracles than this, which this man has done? Because they didn't know that the Christ was standing in front of them. A lot of Christians are standing. God is right in front of them, right close to them. The Bible says God is closer to us than the hairs of our body. Until you know him. We are chasing God through a man. We are chasing God through a, a place. Those are his acts. Thank God for the miracles that God is using men to rot in the world. But I can know that God. 
once you know that God, you have peace in your heart of heart. When you pray, you will know that God has heard you. Your head will not be carrying different oil from different altars without understanding where you are going. Many of us have been laid hand upon in thousands of places that even if, if God visit us today, we don't even know where God visited us from. I want you to know God, not his eyes. Know him by who he is. The Bible said, they say, when Jesus comes, when the Christ comes, will he do more miracles than this man? They didn't know that the man was Jesus Christ. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is here with us. And you see him. The Bible says he walks upon the sea. The weed comes. And we know whether not where he's going and where he's coming from. God is in the air. He is in all of this because he's a spirit. Can you say, God, I want to know you? Because that is the only way we can get out from chasing things that are not viable. I say, God, I want to know you. I want to stay with you. I want you to know that Jesus said, until you eat me. And when he was talking about eating him, he was not talking about his flesh. In fact, if you read this, this, this place in the Bible, in John chapter 6, many of his disciples left him. We don't have time to go and talk about them. 17 disciples left him in one day. If you were Jesus, you would say, I, I was not told. The Bible says in John chapter 6, verse 51, and Jesus began to say, I am the living bread which come down from heaven. If any man eats this bread, he shall live forever. And the bread that I give is my flesh, which I give for the life of the world. And he continued. And this time they say he was blaspheming. Then Jews therefore stood among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? They thought this, this guy was talking about burning himself. They were thinking, we are not cannibals. What do we do with his flesh? 53. Hallelujah. John chapter 6, verse 50. And then Jesus said unto them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, except you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life. So the only way to get in, into me is to eat me. That's what Jesus said. And I, I know a lot of you are wondering, say, they were not cannibals. Many of them were human beings, not animals. How can they be eating him? But Jesus was telling them the truth. Verse 54. Whosoever eat my flesh and drinketh my blood had eternal life. And I will give, I will raise him up at the last day. That Jesus was talking about intimacy. You cannot know me if you don't eat me. And ah, they, was, they were very, very bad. If you read down, they left him. The Bible said, for my flesh is meat indeed. 55. And my blood is drink. I told you the wine was the blood of Jesus that he used to unify the church. It's a, it's a token of love. In fact, 56. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwells in me and I in him. If you read it down, we're going to stop here. The Bible says 70 of the disciples came to him and said, we have heard people say crazy things, but we have never heard anybody proclaim this kind of word. They left him. And he looked at the 12, said, what are you still doing here? Are you not going to leave also? The 12 didn't know what to do. But the Bible said, Peter said, no, master, where are we going to go? We don't have any other place to fall back. We are going with you. Say, God, Give me your flesh to eat. I need to drink your blood. Christianity is not just clapping hands and dancing in church. It's not just confessing Jesus Christ. Until you get into the supernatural. Until you begin to eat his flesh and drink his blood. What do you do when you join a cult? They give you some negative things and they give you blood to drink. Christianity is that kind of place. But it's not a cult. It's a lifestyle. Once you translate into the supernatural in the spirit, you have become like Christ. The only way we become like Christ is to eat him in the spirit. We still talk about the blood of Jesus. Jesus died over 2,000 years ago. But that blood is still alive. The Bible says the blood is fresh. 
if the moment you invoke the mystery of that blood, you see the blood. He said, unless you eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part in me. I want you to tell God today, say, God, give me your flesh. Open my eyes and my ears. Give me your flesh and your blood to eat. I want to get into that place. Many times we chase things. Many of us, we have been Christians for 20 years, 30 years. We have never understood the supernatural part of God. We think that Christianity is all about how many cars you have and they those things does not move God. In fact, everything we call breakthrough to God is never breakthrough. When God gives you anything, he's giving you based on the assignment he wants you to do. Hallelujah. If God needs you to travel somewhere and you need a car there, he gives you a car because that car is a necessity. Not because he wants you to show off to your friends that you have arrived. So the things that we call breakthrough is never what is breakthrough to God. The breakthrough is when you have seated in the throne in, in the heavenlies, and your crown is given unto you, and you are celebrated a, a, as a star. And Jesus said, come unto me, thou faithful servant, sit on my right hand. That is where you are fulfilled. And many people have gotten to that level here on earth. Paul said, I have run my race, and I have finished my course. He has not died yet. He was here on earth. He said, I have run my race, and I have finished my course. Elijah, God told him, say, Elijah, it's time to come home. And he said, Lord, how are we going? God said, don't worry, I'm sending a private jet to pick you up. Charlotte came and carried him here on earth. Hallelujah. You must eat my flesh. Say, God, help me. Give me your flesh. I'm not talking about the physical sacrament that we do in church. That is a symbol. The breaking of bread and wine is a symbol. Even though Jesus said, do this as often as you drink. In remembrance of me, we have to still do the physical work. But Lord, give me your flesh. I need to eat you and drink your blood. So I can have you in me. He said, if you don't do that, for my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. He that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwells in me and I in him. Lord, help me to eat your flesh so I can dwell in you today. Bakataraba. Help me, O Lord, to eat your flesh and drink your blood. Give me your flesh. That is the word. Give me your flesh. I need your flesh. I need your blood. I need your flesh. I need your blood. We have to chase spiritual things. It's enough of chasing physical things. Those things perish. They expire. But when you get some things, it is forever. Jesus said, when you eat my flesh and drink my blood, then I will dwell in you and you shall dwell in me. This is eternity. We are talking about life forever. I have come that you should have life and have it in abundance. When you have an abundance of anything, you give it away. You give it out. You deposit it somewhere. You, you, you help somebody with it. Many of us are chasing life, but there is a way to get life. I have come that you should have life and have it in abundance. The way to life is the flesh of Jesus and the blood of Jesus Christ. Let him ask him for the blood now. Ask him through the power of the Holy Ghost that supernaturally the blood shall be injected into you. You begin to drink his blood. You begin to drink his blood. You begin to eat his flesh. Let the covenant, the, the sacrament of the covenant of the blood and the bread the, the body of Jesus Christ be given to you now. Spiritually, I'm not talking about the physical world. It is good to do it in church. We all break bread and wine. Many of us have been breaking bread and wine for years and things have not changed in our life until you break it in the spirit and you eat his body. Lord, give me your body. Give me your blood. I need your blood and your body. Ask God to do that for you. Ask him today to feed you with his blood. Spirit of God, allow me Count me among the people that is worthy to eat of the flesh and the blood of Jesus Christ. That all that I am asked to do will be able to come to pass. Because this is what is going to set you up for the assignment. If you are willing and obedient, the Bible said, you shall eat the good of the land. If you are willing and obedient, you cannot eat the good of the land. If you are not willing and obedient, 
ask God to give you the flesh today. Let the blood be released upon you. Rabogo Sakataba. In the name of Jesus Christ, I receive grace to eat the, 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 the broken body of Jesus Christ and to drink his blood. Makoto Shokotobo. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. David was saying in Psalm 27, if you look at verse 11 of Psalm 27, David said, teach me thy ways, O Lord, and lead me in the plain path because of my enemies. Teach me thy ways. That is the way we are going. Teach me your ways. There is no way for me to understand it. Teach me your ways. Help me to understand you that I should walk in thy precept. Teach me thy ways, O Lord. Say, God, teach me as you give me the blood and the bread. Let me eat your flesh and your blood. As I eat, teach me thy ways. Teach me thy ways. If you always submit to God as somebody that has no willpower, then you are ready to lead others. Until you are led, you cannot lead. The Bible says, for they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Or they that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. Until God begins to lead you are going and coming, you cannot be a leader. God cannot trust you until God begins to lead you. The Bible says, and the Spirit of God led him to the wilderness to be tempted. Even Jesus has to submit to the Holy Spirit. Can you submit yourself un unto God today? The Bible says, commit your ways unto the Lord, and he shall bring them to pass. Lord, I can't do it anymore. I can't even preach. I can't even evangelize. I can't heal myself. Help me today. Help me to know your ways. Help me to find your ways. Bakoto Sokotobo, Rekata Sikataba, Mazikataba. Help me to walk in your ways. Because it's not enough to find the way of God if you cannot walk in that path. The path of the just, the Bible said, is like a shining light. It shines brighter and brighter. Help me, O oh Lord, to walk in that way and in that path by the unction and the power. In the name of Jesus Christ. As I begin to walk, as I begin to walk today, like I begin to walk in the path of God. Hebrews chapter 3, verse 10. The Bible says, Wherefore, I was grieved with this generation. Paul was writing to the church of Hebrew and said, They do always err in their heart, and they have not known my ways. Paul said, I am angry with this generation because they err with their heart. But they have not known my ways. That is the only way we enter into his realm. Until we know him. They that know the God that they serve, Daniel. They shall be strong and they shall do exploits. They that know. Until there's an intimate relationship. You cannot know God when you have not eaten his flesh. And drank his blood. Knowing him is having an intimate relationship with him. And God has completed himself in the, in, in the nature of Jesus Christ. So we thank God for Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the, is, the, is the custodian of the Godhead. Both the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus is the, the completion of the Godhead. The Bible says that in the book of Colossians. Hallelujah. God said this generation, they have erred in their heart. And they have not known my ways. Hebrews 3, 10. Lord, help me to know your ways today. So I can begin to walk in your realm. I can begin to operate in the realms of God. And do your assignment and your bidding. And do the things that you have called me to do. I have been doing my things. A lot of people will succeed on earth and die like men, men. And nobody will remember them. Because you have never walked. Some people are looking at themselves saying, I'm very successful. And God said, well... That is in your own eyes because you are not doing what I ask you to do. The only thing that guarantees success is when you fulfill purpose. When your purpose of creation or existence or why you were born is fulfilled. It doesn't matter what you become. People can become masters of business or masters of any kind of skill and do extremely well with that. And you are doing the, you are in the wrong track. Once you go off the track of God, you are your own. The Bible says you will be like a beast that dies and nobody remembers them. I don't want to be like a beast. I don't want to be forgotten. Life is eternal. So why should I waste 100 years on earth 
and in eternity, I pay for it for life. There is a life after this place. Many times we come here, we are so comfortable. On it. We are on transit here. That like when you get to the airport and your flight is not connecting, you have to wait for two, three hours. That's how we live on earth. I will make the best of the earth when I come here. But that is not my home. Heaven. It's our ultimate. And everybody must answer for their life. Your father will not answer for you, neither will your mother. You can't say, my father did this to me or my mother did that. Whatever your father and your mother did before you came, you can correct it. Because God has given us the same ability. There were channels that you came through. That doesn't mean that you have to die like them. Hallelujah. Even though the seed that they sow can affect you, but you can change that. God has given you the ability, the power. In Jesus Christ is the authority and all the power of the Godhead. Hallelujah. I want you to see in the Colossians chapter 2. Colossians chapter 2. Look at verse 9. For in him dwelleth all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. The fullness. We are talking about the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. In Jesus Christ dwells. Is, dwell, Jesus is the inhabitant. Jesus is the habitat of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So if I'm getting Jesus Christ, that means I got the Holy Spirit and I got the Father. All the, 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 the deity of the full head of God is in Christ. I told us many times, when God gave us Jesus, he gave us himself. But when God gave us the Holy Spirit, he gave us all, every ability. I told you about the realms of God. For thine is the kingdom, which is governed by God, the power, which is the Holy Spirit, and the glory, which is the honor of God. God moves through his glory in the, in the furnace of fire. Um, the moment we begin to operate in that realm, then we can be able to activate everything. You are not limited when you are operating in the supernatural. Today, tell God to give you the ability of the Godhead bodily. Everything that is in the Godhead bodily. Let it come to you today. Rabogo Sakataba. Bazeke Terebali Katashikotobo. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Oh Kata Sakataba. Maziko Torobo. Rabagashikataba. Lord, you say Jesus Christ has all the ability and power. He is the custodian of the Godhead. Every part of God is fulfilled in him. I come, O oh Lord, today that you reveal yourself to me. Make me known to thy ways. Make me known to what you have called me to do. Today is not the, the time to ask for a car or house or even ask for healing. Once you understand the mystery and the power of his glory, healing will be nothing. There's a realm that when you enter into it, it takes away sicknesses. The Bible says Jesus told the woman, say, healing is children's bread. You don't want to waste your time on children's bread. See, we cannot take what belongs to the children and give to dogs. Many of you are matured in the Lord. If you are still a baby in the, in the Christian Lord, you can still be asking for food. You know, ask for house. Ask for a job. But if God has trusted the city where you live in your hand, is it time to ask for food or telling God about the souls in that city? Give me the ability to conquer them, to be able to bring them into the kingdom of God. Give me the power to take over that city by the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. We are talking about taking up responsibility that is large based on your ability today. Because we have Jesus Christ. We begin to operate. Jesus was just 33 and a half years when he finished his ministry. And a lot of us have gone past that age. And if you are in your 20s, thank God. But this is the time to manifest the power of his glory. In John chapter 14, verse 5, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not where you are going, and how can we know your ways? This is one of the disciples of Jesus. And when Jesus was talking about him, him departing from them, Thomas said, Lord, we don't know where you are going. How can we now know where you are? If we don't know where you are going. How can we know your ways? How can we know the way? And Jesus said to him in verse 6, Jesus said unto them, I am the way. 
don't look for another way. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, no man, this is a categorical statement. No man coming to thy father except for my name. And if you had known me, you have known my father also. And from thenceforth, you know him and have seen him. So don't ask a question about God again, because you have seen God. If you have known me, you have known my father. I told you that Jesus Christ is the custodian of the Godhead. When he left, he said, I'm going to send you my spirit. We shall dwell with you. So he has the ability to release the Holy Ghost. And he has the ability to manifest God. So Thomas, the doubting guy, asked him, he said, come on. You say you are going somewhere. We don't even know your ways. How can we know where you are going? Jesus said, what? I am the way. I. As God said, God, show me your way. Once you get him in that path, you enter into the supernatural realm. You begin to operate in the name of Jesus Christ. Rokota Sakataba. Balase Kataraba. A lot of people have been in Christendom. You have not even been able to stand and speak in tongues for one hour. Where you don't ask for anything. You just begin to speak the, the, the heavenly language. And you speak until it's coming from your, from your stomach. It's not coming from your words. You, you can't even say anything. You are just humming. Some of you are just going to be groaning. Mm, 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 because there is, there is power coming out of you. That is where we are going. I, I, I want you, when you come in here, you, you, you will begin to operate in the supernatural. We don't have to see you and lay hands on you for things to happen. Because the power of God, it can be anywhere. God is not limited to a place. That's why he's a spirit. So Jesus said to them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man, that is a categorical statement. No man comment to my father except my name. Are you ready today to hold on to Jesus? And as if your life depends on him. I told you that God has made him the, the totality of the Godhead is in Jesus Christ. In Colossians chapter 2 verse 9. For in him dwells all, not some, all the fullness of the Godhead. The fullness. When you're talking about the Godhead, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three of them dwell in one man, bodily, in the flesh. Now, Thomas began to say, you say you are going somewhere. We don't know where you are going. How can we know your ways? Jesus said, I am. I am the way. Nobody has claimed that. Every religion, everyone that has come and gone, nobody claimed to be the way. Jesus said, I am the way and he is the way. If you can be able to see him in that form, whereby you see the light coming out of him, glittering. He took, he took Simon Peter, Andrew, James, and John. They went to the mountain. And as he was praying in the mountain of transfiguration, they entered with him into the supernatural. And light began to shine from him. And the, the Bible said that he was glittering like a light. And Peter shouted and said, Master, if it is possible, let's build three houses. One for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. Peter was on earth while he went into the heavens and saw Moses and Elijah. In him is the fullness of Godhead. He is the way. He is the way. Show me the way. Show me Jesus Christ. Show me the ways. Where is Jesus? Once we get Jesus, we get him. We get everything. When you get Jesus, you get God. You get the Holy Spirit. You get it all. Say, God, show me that way. Show me that way. I receive you today. I receive you as my Lord. I receive you as my God. I receive you as the Spirit. Lord, come to me. Come upon me. Take over my life. I submit my will unto you. I submit my being unto you. I submit everything about me. Akutu sakataba. Rakoto shokotobo. Lebaga sikadama. Bazi kataraba. Rakoto shokotobo. Just begin to pray in the spirit. Let the power of God begin to move in you. I want you to come inside of you. Let the power come from you, within you, inside. The Bible says, out of your belly shall flow. If you have eaten the body of Jesus and drank his blood, it goes inside and settles in you. From today henceforth, 
Possibilities will be brought in your head because God will begin to give you a nation, a city, a town, maybe your family, a clan, a community, whatever it is, a hamlet. God is giving it to you because you are a representative of God. If you can carry the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, many of you, your capacity is increasing tonight, this hour. Your capacity to host the heavenlies is increasing. You can be able to host God comfortably because of what God is putting in you. God is trusting you again to do great things. Healing shall be wrought in your hand. Many of you, you will prophesy. You will speak in angelic voices. Some of you that are prayer warriors, you will go into the spirit and pray for hours, two, three, four, five hours. When you come out, the city where you are living is depending on your prayer to survive. Many of you are gate watchers for cities. You are not just a, a, a child of God. You are gate watchers. God has entrusted a whole city in your hand that until you pray, something will not happen in that city. Are you going to stand today as an intercessor and say, God, I take over the land of labor. I stand as a principality. Every evil in this land, I cancel it. Because what you say, the Bible says, the Lord confirmed the words of his servants. You, God has given you a voice that the enemy cannot gainsay. The devil has no power to contradict or to reject your word because you are carrying the deity, the, 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 the formation, the, 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 the Godhead is in you. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost until you eat by flesh and drink by blood. You cannot, you cannot be part of me. That's what Jesus said. Ah, I want you to have a holy hunger today. Let your appetite in the spirit be enlarged. Let it begin to increase the appetite to pray, to do the will of God, to serve God. You cannot be worn into the things of God anymore. You are now going to begin to discern in the spirit. You start to do willfully the things that God has put in your hand. People will not beg you to come to church or ask you to serve God or to even give to the kingdom or to win soul. It will become a lifestyle until you eat Christ. You cannot do his will. Ask God. Jesus said, tarry you in Jerusalem until the Holy Ghost is come upon you and you shall receive power. Lord, give me that power. I need your power. Give me your power today. Ah, alakata sokotobo. Rebaga shakata bababa. Mazeke treba. So you can operate in his realm. It is not easy to enter into that place. But once you get in, oh, you, you will enjoy it. For the rest of your life, you will not fear anything anymore because you are fear. People will be afraid of you, not because of you, but because of what is in you and what is behind you and what is around you or what is in front of you. That the path of the just will begin to shine. Your path will begin to shine. In everywhere you go, you will become a solution bringer. You come into a place, you profess solution. You are not afraid. You are not afraid whether the economy is crashing today, whether people are dying all around you. A thousand shall fall by your side, 10,000 by your right hand. None shall come near your dwelling. Only with your eyes shall you see and behold how the wicked is being punished by the authority and the power. It doesn't matter whether there's a COVID or there's a sickness in the air. You carry the DNA of God. You are disease killer. When you enter into a place, you eradicate sickness by the unction and the power. Life of God is in you. Jesus said, I have come that you should have life and have it in abundance. Let the abundant life of Christ begin to come out of you now by the unction and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. Mazoko Torobo. Rekata Shakataba. John chapter 1, verse 14. The Bible said, and the word was made flesh. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as the only begotten son of the father, full of grace and truth. The word was made flesh. Today, we have heard the word. We have beheld it. Many of us have even eaten the word. And the word is flowing out of us. Because the Bible says, out of your belly shall flow the, the rivers, rivers, not, 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 not streams, the rivers of living water. The word was made flesh. Jesus Christ is that word. And we are going to eat that flesh today until you eat my flesh and drink my blood. 
You cannot. The word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. There's a glory that comes out from it. Radiates once you begin to eat the Many of you, holy anger is coming into you today. The urge to pray. God is putting a burden upon you. This is not, oh, pastor is telling you that this is who you are. No, you will have witness. The people that follow Christ in those days, just as here, when they hear him, they follow him. He did not struggle with evangelism. Many of you are still struggling to do the will of God, struggling to serve God, struggling to overcome sin, not because you, uh, God is weak. No, you have not yielded. Today, let the power of God begin to burn inside of you that you can't even sleep. You, many of you will begin to travel in the space tonight, not as a witch, but as a principality, but begin to understand your territory. You can only have dominion when you have submitted unto under authority. God will give you dominion. I told you last time, that was the only thing the devil did not have. If you're looking for anointing, you are wasting your time. Once you have authority, you control everything. The devil was the most anointed in the heavenlies, but he cannot command one angel until he tried to take dominion and he fell. But God created man and put all abilities under the earth of, onto man. Today, get God and get authority. Get power that you speak and decree in your city and say, devil, this far have you gone. No more shall you go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Some of the things we record here, we, we, the, the miracles is, is so much that these days people call from everywhere and we just speak to them. Simple words, simple instruction, and they do it and they come and shout and give testimony. Because we are spiritual beings. I don't come and woe you and tell you this and that and that and lie to you. We go into the supernatural, we make a decree, not from the, from the, from the earthly realm. We go past the earth. We go past the heavens. We enter into the realm of God. That is where you speak everything under the earth, in the galaxies, under the sea. Man is having some realms, the, the heavenly realms, the earthly realms, and the sea realms. Hallelujah. But we are going to speak past all these four realms that man operates in and still get results. Today, let the flesh, the word that was made flesh, let it begin to dwell in your life. Let's eat the word so that you shall be full of grace and truth. Thank you, Lord, for we know that you have done it. We bless you, Lord, we worship you. We glorify, we adore you. In the name of Jesus. As we are rounding up, I want us to read Romans chapter 8, verse 11, and we are going to pray with it. Romans 8, verse 11, the Bible says, But if the spirit of him that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you. You are talking about eating that body now. If that spirit, I'm talking about the complete fullness of Godhead. If the spirit of God dwells in you, he that raised Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by the same spirit that dwells in you. Let the spirit of God that raised Jesus from the dead quicken my mortal body by the unction and the power. Let my mortal body, if that spirit comes into you, I don't care what sickness they call it, whether you don't have organs, those organs will start to grow. I've seen people that their limbs were shot. One guy who we were pre praying in South Africa and the spirit of God came upon him. One of his legs was shorter than the other leg and his limbs grew. I've seen such miracles. God created the heavens and earth. He can make anything happen. Dead people come back alive. Their spirits have departed from their body and we call them, they come back. That miracle is not strange. The Bible says, if that same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, dwell. I'm not talking about visiting you. We're talking about living inside of you. He that raised up Jesus Christ from dead shall quicken your mortal body. There is no impossibility with God. But the Bible said, with God, all things are possible. Jesus, when he was in Gethsemane, he cried, he said, Father, for you are the God of all possibilities. Today, I want you to ask God that the spirit, I'm not saying asking for anything. Let that spirit that quickened the body of Christ, the dead body of Christ, let that spirit come up, take over my life, take over my body, possess me today. 
When you want to be possessed, be possessed by the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, don't be drunk with wine in essence, but be drunk with the Holy Ghost. There's a possession that is cool. When they say somebody is possessed, I want you to desire to be possessed by the Holy Ghost. Let the Spirit of God possess your body. Let your body begin to host God today. That you begin to operate in the realm of God by the unction and the power. When you operate in that realm, as a God, you decree and declare things. Because as a God, you operate in the, in the supremacy and in the sovereignty of God himself. So nothing is above you. You will be above and beyond. You operate as God. I'm not talking about operating now in a lesser power. You operate in the God power. In the name of Jesus, whatever it is that has a name. The Bible says the name of Jesus Christ. At the mention of that name, every knee, not just in earth, every knee in the heavens and on earth shall bow. At the mention of Jesus, whatever the knee is, is it sickness or infirmity? Is it sin? Is it demonic oppression? Some of you have been running every day in the dream. The devil cannot let you sleep. You will be awake, shouting, praying. No, let Jesus take over your body. And let me see that devil that will come back into your house. Who born that day? By the unction and the power. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, possess us today. Take over my being. Take over my body. Take over my flesh. Lord, dwell in my life. I release my body unto you. Father, dwell in me. Holy Spirit, dwell in my body. I yield my spirit unto you. I yield my body unto you. Remove every removable. Whatever does not give you glory, take it away. Take over my life that I shall live according to thy will. For the Bible says, a broken thou Thy sacrifice is a broken spirit. I want you to give him the sacrifice of breaking your heart today. But David said in Psalm 50, 51 verse 17, a broken and a contrite heart, thou will not despise. That is what God cannot despise. We are mortal men compassed with infirmity. Many of us have seen even now. But let God take over your life and sin will be on their way out. And sin will run far away from you. Many of you are struggling to live right. No, just believe right. And you begin to live right. Once you believe God absolutely, then you start to live right. But if you still keep your beliefs and you want to live right, it's almost impossible to live in the flesh and live right. When you yield your body to God, sin will be far away from you. You'll be begging sin, say, come, please, can you just come? Please say, I can't, I can't come in because I can't come and dwell around you. There is a, a force in you. There is a power that possesses you. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for taking over us. Release yourself today. Release your body. That's the realm we want to start to operate. We have grown and we should go past the realm of taking from God. Giving me, give me that, give me this. Today is the time to get into that realm and say, God, let me be you. Help me to walk in your shoes. And God is not a rich God. He's desiring that we should walk in his place. We should be like him. That's why he came. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Lord, we desire everlasting life today. Thank you for making it happen. And if you are here for the first time, or you have not given your life to Christ, this message will not make sense to you until you have got to, to that level. I want you to say, Lord Jesus Christ, I come to you today. I believe in my heart of hearts that you are my personal Lord and my Savior. And I confess with my mouth that you died for my sins. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. Jesus Christ, come into my life. God bless you. You are born again. Look for a Bible-believing church. Fuse yourself and begin to serve. And let go. Because if you are waiting upon the Lord for anything, begin to serve him. And you see everything will be expansive. I love you all with all my heart, but above all, God love you the whole. I will see you tomorrow. Have a great day.